Good morning, friends. It is a crazy day out on the patio, so we're inside today. Um, and I'm a little bit crooked, but that's the story of my life, isn't it? My name is Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church. And I am so glad uh, to be with you today. Uh, I hope that you are safe, that you are warm, and that you are dry. Let's remember our uh, neighbors, our brothers, and our sisters who can't say that um, today. Hang on just a second. Um, the heater's just a little bit warm. <clears throat> we are uh, reading through Scripture today, and though we are walking step by step closer to the cross with our Savior, um, amazed by His love, um, overwhelmed by his constancy. Uh, we are also appreciative that he is the living word, <clears throat> and we're going to keep plowing through his word to understand God's grace better, to be able to receive that love fully. And so today I want us to talk about Hannah. And so uh, just a quick reminder, uh, good morning, Laura and Polly's with us. So glad to see you guys. Um, as a quick reminder, feel free to share uh, any um, uh, videos or words that we share together. Be Feel free to share those with other people um, or direct them either to our Facebook page or to our um, YouTube channel. That's where everything um, is posted. Hey, Kathy, good morning to you too. We can't wait to hear good things about the... Kairos weekend. So glad you're there. Hey, Gwen, hope your dad's okay. So glad that you were able to check in on him. Be safe there. Y'all have had bad weather too, I know. And there's Janet and Ruth. Anyway, we, it's so good to see everybody. I know that we're a few days behind in order for me to attend to Hannah, but I think Hannah's um, faith walk uh, her experience with God is so crucial to ours uh, because of the um, boldness and the persistence. Um, she reminds me of that story that Jesus tells of the persistent widow who kept coming to the judge again and again and again asking for what she needed. Yeah, we're going to talk about Hannah today. Excuse me, maybe that'll help just a little bit. So we're looking um, in 1 Samuel. We're not going to get far past that first chapter today, but we'll start making ground uh, tomorrow and on Thursday. And so I'm looking at the first chapter of 1 Samuel. We have finished uh, Ruth and uh, Boaz. Remember, that was kind of around 1190-ish. That's the timeline that we're um, looking at. And uh, things are getting kind of tough with Israel because um, there are so many generations removed from the Levites being established um, as, um, as there's Papa Joe. Hey, Papa Joe. We're so glad to see you. Um he, they, they, the Levites were not doing their work. They were not spiritually mature. They were not considering themselves a spiritual leadership for Israel. They were doing a job, and they did the job, most of them, in the ways that, um, that benefited them and their family. So <clears throat> that's why we get this business with uh, Hannah and Eli, who is the current priest uh, in uh, this area. Uh, they're in um, the hill country of Ephraim. And so the Levites who were serving in that area were Eli and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, a second Phinehas, not the same one that we've mentioned before. And um, Eli's sons were not faithful at all. And God is beginning to do something. Hannah is one of two wives um, uh, that belong to Elkanah. 
uh, Elkanah had Penina and um, Hannah. Penina was able to bear children um, and was a little snotty because she lorded it over Hannah when Hannah could not contain it or could not cover up her disappointment and her longing for children. So when they were before the Lord um, at uh, required feasts, when they gathered for worship, Penina took advantage and teased Hannah about that. And there's this one particular time when Hannah is absolutely distraught. And, El and Elkanah asks her, is my love not enough than many sons? Well, no. <laughs> and it's not because sons are better or children are better than a husband. It's a completely different kind of love. Matter of fact, it's a love that the two of you together could share if children indeed are a part of the family. And so here she's been made fun of and teased and belittled by Penina. And now she has been misunderstood and challenged by Elkanah. And it gets even worse. This time when they are praying um, before the Lord, um, Eli is watching her, and she is so intent in prayer, Hannah is, that maybe you could discern that her body is rocking a little bit. And every word that she is thinking in her mind and saying before God, her lips are moving, though there is no sound coming out. And the priest, the man of God, assumes not that this woman is in prayer like he has been in prayer many times. He assumes that she's drunk. And so he judges her. He challenges her in a different way than her husband did. Can you imagine the pain of <clears throat> being barren? That's an unfortunate word. But that's the way culture would have looked at that. Can you imagine the pain and the disappointment and the pressure from the outside that she feels, um, Hannah does, because of her um, not having children? And then on top of that, um, the immature belittlement of um, a sister wife, um, the misunderstanding, and the whining of your husband because he doesn't understand. And now the person who is to be your mediator between, uh, mediator with God <clears throat> also misunderstands and accuses you of being drunk, does not understand what's going on. Uh, Hannah's determination uh, to know what she wanted, but also to know um, that God is a loving God and ever-present and listening to prayers. This is some diligence, y'all, in faith. Have you ever been in that situation? Have you been in that place before where it seems as if the one dream you have <clears throat> is making no ground whatsoever, no matter how hard you work, that you're not understood, that people challenge you, that people judge you because of where you are in life, and yet... You're driven to keep going and keep going. That's, I want to encourage you to understand the power by which Hannah is living because she had no support, not from a sister wife, not really from her husband. She feels as if she has no support from her pastor, though that was not truly his role. And for nine months, she was able to nurture <clears throat> that little baby and come to terms with God answering her prayer even before everybody else began to turn 
and to understand. She could have done the same thing that Penina did and lorded over them, teased them, talk about how she was right and you don't know what you think you know. She could have been interminable with her husband, but it was their son. And she could have thought herself better than the man of God, but she didn't. Listen to this. At the close of that uh, first chapter, um, Hannah promises God, if you'll give me a child, I promise he will belong to you. That he will serve you, that I will allow him to be um, to, to live um, with the Levites, that he'll be raised by them. He'll serve them first in preparation for serving you. If, if I could have a child then he will belong to you. And look at what happened. She talks over this commitment with Elkanah, and they are before God. Uh, she stands with this uh, sacrifice and with her son before Eli, and she says to him, As surely as you live, my Lord, that's a small L, Lord. Uh, she's being polite. I am the woman who stood before you praying to the Lord. No, 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 I'm sorry. I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord, capital L. I prayed for this child, <clears throat> and the Lord granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Samuel did. She named her son Samuel. They named him Samuel, and he belonged to the Lord from the very beginning. But listen to this mother's love. Not only uh, was uh, Hannah persistent and persevering, trusting in God's promises, <clears throat> believing that God would honor her, that she made good on her promises and connected Samuel to the Lord. Now, it looks like she's dropped a baby off, but he was weaned, which means, could have meant that he was as early, I mean, as young as three when they had this exchange with Eli, but probably he was older than that. A three-year-old is not going to be able to serve. I don't care what culture you're from, what generation you're from. Three-year-old not going to be able to serve Eli and his boys. <clears throat> the way it was intended, not until he's a little older. And every year after bringing him in this way to the Lord, Hannah returned, I think, singing the same song in her heart. And she adjusted his robe, his ephod, as he grew. She provided, she was still supporting Samuel in a way that she had not felt that support from others. What a growing love for God at the same time. She had this growing love for her son who would serve him and represent him. Sometimes what we believe is right and promised to us takes such a long time in coming we begin to work hard in our minds and even with our hands and feet, with our bodies, to try to make sense of why things are not happening the way we believe they should. Hannah could have run far ahead of God. Lord knows there are many testimonies to how that has happened throughout the story of God's people. But Hannah was patient and trusting she was prayerful and persistent, and even when she had no support or understanding, she continued to trust in God, to call out to him. Her song is recorded in the second chapter of 1 Samuel, and if you'll go to the first chapter of the book of Luke and read uh, Mary's Magnificat or Mary's song, they sound very similar 
about how God has honored them and given them, them children. And we hear these women sing out, my, Lord, my heart rejoices in the Lord and my Lord, my horn is lifted high. That would have, uh, a horn would have been able to hold, have been a carrier, been a vessel of oil, but it was also a way to make noise or song to the Lord. There is no one holy like my Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. What a beautiful song to be able to sing, even as you are prepared to let your son go. N Hannah knows it will. there will never be anything to come between her and understanding that this boy is hers, God's gift to her. And she will not allow anything to come between Samuel being a gift given over to God throughout his whole life. My friends, whenever you get to that season, and maybe you're in it now, remember this. Remember the truth that Hannah clung to is that God is an everlasting God. He hears our prayers. He is always at work for his children's good. And though the promise may not be unfolding how you think or hope or dream or wish that it would, God is sure and true and his promises will come to fruition. That dream that you're holding on to, that promise that you're holding on to, keep persevering and persisting, depending on God, for he is our rock. Sometimes our spouses don't understand. Sometimes those adults that we're thrown in with on a daily basis, our coworkers, our neighbors, church friends, any friends, they may not understand and their helpful words may actually hurt tremendously. God is faithful. Remember Hannah, there is no God like our God. There is no rock like him. He is faithful and true. He hears the cries of your heart. Yes, it hurts when others can't or won't stand by us, but we are never alone because of this companioning one who never leaves us nor forsakes us. I am so grateful for Hannah's witness today, and we will learn in the days ahead that not only Samuel, but um, another boy who was promised to God, Samson. Oh, though we make many missteps, it is possible for us to give our lives over to God again and again. Will you be grateful for Hannah today and learn from her? Be persistent and hopeful. Be tenacious and forever trusting of this one who works on our behalf. Let's pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for this one and we can almost feel her heart breaking as she cries out to you made fun of by um, a sister wife who seems to think they're in competition with each other. But for Hannah, it was about a child, something that would quench the struggle of her heart, that would fill her with joy. We know what that's like. We have dreams. We have hopes. There are things that seem to be missing from our lives that we have ideas about and we come to you and cry out to you just like Hannah did. We've been misunderstood and people who mean well have made it about them just like Elkanah did with her. Give us the same sweet gentleness, the tenderness of Hannah to not make fun or to reject those people because of our pain but to be patient and know from whom our help 
comes. It comes from you. You are the source of our life. You are the one who makes our dreams come true. You are the one who understands us better than we know ourselves. And you are at work for your children's good. Teach us, Lord, how to wait longer than we think we can wait, to be patient with uh, tenderness longer than we think we can for us to be tenacious and to not let go of those dreams because we are trusting in you to make that hope, that vision, that promise unfold. And I thank you, Lord, for those who, under the sound of my voice, are battling this very difficult season in their life right now, waiting waiting for good news, waiting for a break, waiting for healing, waiting for change, waiting for understanding, waiting. Waiting is some of the hardest work that we do. What joy it must have been for Hannah to feel the changes happen in her body as that baby grew, being able to hold that joy so close to her heart to relish the chance to join you in partnership in, uh, in allowing this dream of hers to come to fruition. Help us again to be tender and gentle like Hannah, not thinking of ourselves better than because you are working on our behalf, but thinking only of joining you in this work of bringing love to pass. Indeed, Lord, teach us today how to love you more completely, to receive your love more completely, and to love our neighbors more completely in the same way that we've been loved. Help us to learn from our sister Hannah, and we give you our thanks and praise in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. My friends, it's been good to be with you today. I'm praying for you and encouraging you, especially those of you who are in a difficult time of waiting. Peace be yours. I'll see you soon.